Hey, you guys, look at that. Season 10 rocks on. Welcome to 90s Now. Kel, Adam, how are you? We're the three musketeers. I can barely control my excitement this week. That's all I have to say. (laughs) Well, let's line it up a little bit. All right. Just as far as containing yourself goes. (laughs) Adam, we'll see if we can keep her uh, grounded a little bit because we're going to tell you where Jenna Jackson went, uh, at least a couple of places that she went to, to promote the new documentary that's coming our way. Um, Well, this we'll we'll talk about that because at the time of our recording, this show is a a little bit earlier than what you're hearing it. So we'll get to that. But like I said, we're not going to be right away because we'll have to let uh, Kelly wait a few minutes. (laughs) because <laughs> it's fun Good luck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trample trample we're talking about this now um we've also got word on a reunion tour that has been sidelined which is fancy talk for scrapped which is clear and cut for now anyways <laughs> nev campbell has some insight on the uh, scream movie that might end up acting as job security for her Kelly's got some trivia all ready to go. I'll give you a Jeopardy inspired 90s rewind to make sure that you are musically where you need to be. Okay. Despite the fact that the contestants were not in this particular case. Um, And originally we were going to be talking today about how Elton John is super excited to resume his farewell tour and how he recently joked that with any more delays, he'd be in his 80s by the time the tour is over. And this just in... (laughs) Uh, The obvious delay has happened. So let's start there. Elton John and his tour have been slightly postponed. Why, Kel? Because he has now come down with COVID. Can I just tell you too, like I had a premonition, not that it was going to be COVID, but when I watched the um, interview segment that we had originally talked about talking about, which is, (laughs) you know, like I'm going to be 80 and all this kind of stuff when I come off the road, I was like, maybe don't say that. And then sure enough, like, here we go with an illness. That's like, obviously not fun for anyone. And, and, and thankfully it sounds like he's managing, but yeah, this Mm -hmm. is not, this is not cool. Well, that's the, the good thing for him too, because he is double vaxxed. He's got the booster and all that. So he really is suffering with mild symptoms, uh, which is good, but it's one of those things it's, like don't count your chickens before they're hashed, even though technically this tour has been sort of just on pause for a couple of years, those chickens were set to hatch <laughs> like really, like right there. Nice little basket crackling happening. And then uh, COVID continues. So would you like a, a little laugh actually about the Elton John yes. uh, concert performance in Montreal? Yes, please. So um, he was supposed to be here in 2019, right, Sharon, I believe. Was that? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, my new responsibilities at the radio stations where we work, Sharon and Adam, um, uh, require me to have communiques with uh, our listeners, our STEAM listeners. And so (laughs) I got a communique just this very day from someone who won an Elton John uh, concert tickets like for 2019. And part of his request was, um, A, uh, I see that the concerts have been postponed again and B my tickets are on paper and it's starting to like, not be legible. Can Ooh. you send me new ones? <laughs> what a modern problem. Like it's totally, it would be that if you just left it on your desk in your home office or whatever, and the sun yep. was beaten in, they would fade. Yeah. So there's now like a real concern. So we've actually had to message our promotions company that, that puts on the, uh, the promoters uh, to see if he can get like new electronic tickets and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, I'm sure we'll figure it out, but yeah, like oh, yeah. I, I couldn't actually believe that was the message we got to get today. It's like <laughs> my tickets are fading. I'm not sure I'll be able to use them. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, as it turns out, Elton John will be, uh, by the time this is done. And that was the the joke from the beginning when he announced the tour, the farewell tour, the goodbye yellow brick road tour, which I did see by the way, in Montreal, the first time around. Um, and it's spectacular. I think we've talked about it on this show before, so I don't want to go on and on, but it's really great. (laughs) (laughs) Um, was that it, it was going to take him three years to complete the tour. So for someone who was saying, you know, I want to spend more time with my family. I'm just going to finish this three-year tour (laughs) first, then I'll get to you family. Um, But I think he's had a great dose of his family uh, for the past two years and he's loved it. So I think he's keen to get back out there, finish the shows in the best possible way, which like from my perspective as a fan uh, watching him do it, he was grateful and happy to be there and really on. So I think that he'll bring that back on tour once he gets, uh, 
uh, tests negative and then uh, and then wrap it up and continue spending time with his family. He seems to be everywhere too. Like he's doing other interviews. He's participating in really cool things because he can. You can be at home and be virtual as we know and, and still be very connected in a way that uh, I think is super pleasing to fans. So while this tour will wrap up, I think that his connection with his fans will continue long past the tour. I would just like to mention who I think sh who should open for um, Elton on the farewell, farewell extended version remix tour. Um, <laughs> Cher. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Cause oh she God. was on the 15 year plan of her farewell tour. I saw that one too. And that was <laughs> incredible. Like, what was it like seven or eight costume changes? Full on, full on outfit changes. Side, oh, side note to that, my comparison was also seeing Judas Priest uh, a few years after that and uh, Rob Halford enjoying maybe as many costume changes. Because <laughs> he's just that fabulous. Does he wear a lot of leather chaps? There's a lot of leather. That's what I Mostly thought. because Judas Priest is hell bound for leather. <laughs> <laughs> Look into it. For anybody who's <laughs> listening to our podcast right now, please check out the visual version because Sharon is pretty epic with the... Uh... I was raised on 80s videos. That's <laughs> why. I love it. By the way, the visual <laughs> podcast available for you on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Kelly Alexander show. Venture cautiously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if we actually have better like faces for audio. Uh, no, nah, we're super cute. What are you talking about? Call. Uh, <laughs> you ready to throw some trivia at us, Cal? Because I am ready. We can, we can wait to talk about Janet in a sec. But let's do some trivia first. Right. <laughs> 90s. <laughs> trivia. Bing bong. Wooka, wooka, bing so bong. I have found yet another art and literature um, card, but we'll save that for the <laughs> second question. So we'll smarter see. already. We'll see if you can look smart at the beginning part or sound smart with the first one, which is hobbies, toys, and games. Hmm. Okay. Um, so super popular, especially with girls. What is a baby G? Sharon? Yeah. A power puff girl? <laughs> no. Powder puff, powder puff, power, powder. I don't know. I think it I take my name back. I withdraw. <laughs> I do not know the answer. Thank you, Kyle. Adam. Go ahead. <laughs> a baby G. It's a small doll. I don't know. It is a <laughs> wristwatch. I like how angry you were. Really? I don't know. <laughs> I never know any of this stuff. A baby G. A baby G. It doesn't give me um, the year. Like obviously, it's in the '90s when it was popular, but I thought it might say like around 1994 or what have you. But we did not get that. Um. Oh. Oh. So much for feeling smarter. So much for feeling smart. All right. So now we're all going to feel really stupid. Um, it's, this is it's, it's just, it's a, it's a watch bracelet. It's a, a watch slit. A watch slit? A, 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 a watch with bracelet. It. Yeah. Is that something Flancy McConnell might sport? You're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often you can use that sentence she would have one of those old school digital watches where you had uh, the time the yeah. date yeah and seconds right do you remember those watches where <laughs> you it. actually you could get like uh didn't some of them have and i don't i'm not sure if this was in the 80s or late 80s or early 90s but um the calculator right on the watch yeah that was like the next step after time date and seconds then it was like there was one christmas in the early 80s where kids came back and they had a calculator <laughs> which is the, which was the size of like a an, an apple watch yeah <laughs> how is that cool though how why did kids well, want that because you had access to it in uh you know math exams when yeah. you weren't, weren't allowed bringing calculators in okay now you need calculators because the math that they teach now is much more advanced than the uh uh you know abacus style <laughs> pluses and minuses back in the black and white days what is four apples and two oranges equal <laughs> a healthy diet <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> vitamin c my grandpa had an abacus on his desk. I love that thing. Nice. I should actually go find out if grandma still has it. Yeah, you should. Question number <laughs> dose. Here we go. Um, in February 1994, so Adam was literally just born. I was uh, 
Which famous painting was stolen from the National Gallery in Oslo, Norway? Hmm. Adam. <laughs> Adam, you were not even born yet because you were born the 27th of the month. So go. Um, I forget it. I, a, a Dali yeah. painting, a Salvador Dali painting. Solid guess, but no. I'm going to guess, Sharon. Yep. The Last Supper. <laughs> nice guess. <laughs> Thanks. Because if you're going to steal art, go big. That's not a small painting. Right. Pretty, it's like it's bigger than an eight by ten. Okay. <laughs> so I love the name of this. So the name of the painting that was stolen was The Scream. Oh, uh, oh I know that painting. I, this one? That yeah, one. That, that one. exact face. Yep. <laughs> and I've never heard of this name before. So I, I'm not sure if this is German, but Edvard, Edvard Munch, E D V R D, yeah. Edvard. Ah. Not Edward, Edvard. Edward. Mr. Yeah. Edward Munch. <laughs> So everybody yeah. sucked this week. Anyways, back to you, Sharon. Well, you know what? Uh, because of that, I think we're going to bump up the order of things just to make, make you wait, make you happy. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You know what? We won't keep you waiting any longer to express your excitement of Janet News and the countdown being on for the big Janet Mentory documentary, <laughs> of course. Uh, Janet was on Kelly Clarkson. She also did uh, Good Morning America. And the whole mutual admiration society between uh, Janet and Kelly Clarkson was palpable. <laughs> so cute. Kelly, super cute. Yeah. Um, Kelly Clarkson was like ridiculously excited to have Janet on her show. <laughs> and I love that she loves Janet that much. And she even said in the interview um, at one point that she was like superstar sweating, like while the, <laughs> while the chat was going on. Is that so, a different kind of sweating? Yeah, I think it's superstar sweating. It must be the uh, American Idol version. And so, um, and she was tickled pink when Janet said that she has been a fan of her since American Idol and she almost got misty eyed then. And then something that I thought was just amazing was Kelly made sure to thank Janet for when uh, Kelly uh, covered escapades several months ago in the fall of 2021. And Janet found out about it and, and tweeted her and that apparently just like made her day. But then Janet went even further and sent Kelly flowers and a very kind note. And Kelly said that at the time she was going through a rough time and that note meant so much to her. And I'm assuming that's obviously when the divorce was in its height between Kelly mm -hmm. and her man or yeah. ex-man. So uh, Janet class act and Kelly is a true Janet Stan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no kidding about that. And that's the thing. I mean, in any situation, if you're gonna, uh, if you have a, I think if you have a thought to do something nice as a kind gesture of uh, appreciation, always do it because A, it's a nice thing to do and B, it's gonna feel good for the person receiving it and you never know how good. And clearly, why would Janet know that Kelly Clarkson was having a hard time, but it certainly helped, so. Exactly, and what I'm looking forward to next is they both have uh, sons of the same age, five years old, and so Janet said they should have a play date. And uh. Kelly Clarkson said, well, if you want all of this in a five-year-old form, that's what's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, how fun would that be? Yeah, oh, amazing. Everybody and singing cannot wait and for the, uh, the documentary. Obviously, by the time that uh, this gets released, uh, it'll come out uh, tonight, if you will. Nice. And so there are two parters on A&E and Lifetime. Uh, I believe it'll be two hours tonight and then uh, two hours on uh, Saturday. And get your popcorn ready. Very good. I appreciate that you're speaking in like airtime time reference. It's messing with my marbles, but for our <laughs> listeners, it makes sense. So it's tonight. If you're listening to the show, as soon as it's come out, we appreciate that you do that. The other fun thing about uh, Janet is that she did do, well, actually it's not fun. Uh, the quote that I'm going to get to, um, she did Good Morning America to talk about the documentary also. Um, she gave some insight as to what it's like to uh, have the family name that she has and what it's, what it, you know, it's not always great. Um, and the crappier side of what uh, brothers can do to you, no matter what your level of uh, 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 popularity or fame or whatever, you, you, even if, and even if your brother's Michael Jackson, she said, there were times when Mike used to tease me and call me names. Are you ready for the names? Don't say all of them, Sharon. This is a family show. Well, they're all in the dictionary and they're not swears. All right. But they're, I think it's important to know that, who, you know, anyways, pig, horse, hog, cow, 
Like these are hurtful words, I think from, from your brother. And while she said they laughed it off, uh, she said it hurt. Of course it would hurt, but that's a kind of jerk big brother, Michael Jackson. Was. <laughs> was that when they were young or was that later on in life? Pretty young, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I think young and Janet, it's funny that like, I've, I've heard of, about this story before, but never all of the words that you just said, like I've, I knew that he had called her dunk, which meant donkey, I believe. And then, mm -hmm. uh, so we, I, we've known like true Janet fans have known about this for years, but she's now elaborated to what level it, it got to. But interesting. I think the word that you were sort of apprehensive about my saying was the word just because i have to put in um the guide on the youtube channel what words we use well, so no, that's, that's not it's not a it's a i think it's a bad thing to be yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and certainly you don't want to be called that but it's not like a it's not a it's not a, a a bad word it's not we would never get censored for it on the radio that's right. for sure um but interesting if you're young yeah. how would she ha even have been that you know well, that's it i don't know if like he had so much pressure on him from such a young age that I don't know if this was him acting out, That's you know probable. what I mean? Cause he yeah. always had to be nice. He always had to be on the ball and all that kind of stuff. And like full on performer mode for much of his days, because he was either, you know, performing or at an event or whatever on tour. So I don't know if this was him acting out and because he also had serious issues about his own body. Image. Oh yeah. So sure. he could have also been projecting, right? Yeah. Makes sense. Um, I think also too, like you're just using words that you hear or that you, you, you know, probably want to zing the person, especially when it's your sibling, you know, it's like, it's a totally different game. It's not, he'd never call any of his friends that, you know, you do yeah. different things to your family. If my brother had called me that word, I would have punched him in the nose. Can I show my shirt? Uh, Kelly is demonstrating a black t-shirt, classic tee, uh, back from the uh, Rhythm Nation tour in 1989 that came to Montreal and uh, Sharon bought that shirt at the uh, forum in Montreal and knowing that Kelly would love it. Uh, I gave it to her. Yeah. I bet you were going to say you bought it knowing 15 years later before yeah. we ever met. <laughs> so, I knew one day. <laughs> what I understand is that that t-shirt is older than I am. Ooh, yes, <laughs> it's true. Let's take nice. a look at it, shall we? Wow. Yep. <laughs> that's good quality tea right there yeah yeah this gets by the way like put away as you can notice too i have a, a shirt underneath it so it's like so super your body doesn't touch it exactly got it and once it gets like <laughs> uh it gets specifically washed in a certain manner and then it goes back in a special place in my closet that it does not get touched until special occasions occur such as recording this episode of 90s now precisely <laughs> wow <laughs> Speaking of shirts, I would just like to add that, Adam, uh, you look so comfy. I'd like to cuddle up next to you right now. Oh, this Aww. shirt is so comfortable. It looks it. I love it. You know what he also a, looks like? Story, Adam. You know when you go to like a, like an outdoor event and they have that green turf? Like Adam looks <laughs> like he's wearing green turf. Well, that doesn't sound like a compliment, but I'll take it. <laughs> Kelly, sometimes you just got to stop, you know? <laughs> I clearly have been hanging out with Michael Jackson too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mentioned before that uh, Nev Campbell, who has also been doing the rounds to promote the new Scream movie, um, and she was speaking about how the character of Sidney Prescott has inspired uh, fans of the series of movies. And of course she would. She, she lives. <laughs> right? <laughs> and what she has said recently is that she thinks it's important that... Um, that Sidney Prescott never becomes a victim in these movies. What she says is that she does represent a certain amount of strength and lack of victimhood. And that means a great deal to people. She said she's had a lot of people come up to her in the past and just say that she inspired them in some way or helped them in their lives in some way, um, which is not what you'd normally expect from a, a, a scary movie or horror film. But she said she'd hate to see the Sidney character take a fall saying that I think it would be the wrong message. I'm sure she does think that it means she wouldn't be in the movie anymore, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. There has to be like a resilience of a, of a title character and man, she's got it. She might I, be the last one standing Sharon. Eventually. I think she'd have to be, Yeah. but gosh, who never, whoever thought that a, another movie would come, you know? Yeah. Those Cause this is, is this good. five? This is five, right? This five? is five. Yeah. I don't think I saw four, but I did see the first three. 
and like, mm, I'm not sure if, <laughs> if I could do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I saw, I think the first one and then that was it. Kelly doesn't do, as I'm talking in third person, um, horror movies very well. Oh man. I, I used to like, I, I like horror. I like being scared and like, I don't like gory stuff. I don't like, yeah. you know, but, and, it, but scream does like, there's an element of, you know, goriness to them, but it's quick. <laughs> like you're dead. You know, you're a little bit injured with that stabbing, but you're dead now. <laughs> you know, there's other weirdo movies that prolong it and they show you the torch. I don't dig that at all. Yeah. But scary what's around the corner. Oh my God. That stuff. <laughs> I dig. Totally dig. Anyways, I that's can see it. it in your face. I used to dig it. I'm not sure if I'd be able to handle it now. Well, you don't like, um, cause you and I've had this discussion before you, as for the grossness factor, uh, your sister and I, sister Deb, who I love profusely, uh, we were yeah. big criminal minds fans and you could not do it. I can't yeah. do it because that's like ripped from the headlines or like the, you know, page sixes or whatever it, that's stuff that's happened. And if it's not based on some kind of reality, then some cuckoo has <laughs> written it. Do you know? Yeah. So there's some loose marbles happening mm -hmm. and i don't want to know that i mean i have uh, to i know i get it that it's out there but i'm i don't need it in my living room. i watched most episodes um of that show because i fell in love with it but there's one episode where i i i would never watch it again and i'll just say it involves pigs and that's enough okay you don't have to say anymore so uh <laughs> i don't think this is a surprising bit of information but the plans for the reunion tour that would have celebrated the fuji's 25th anniversary have been scrapped that's what the headline read scrapped not sidelined not maybe later scrapped <laughs> so here's why i don't I'll, I'll read the quote actually just the anticipation and understanding of disappointment but that their anniversary tour will not happen not be able to happen. They said the continued COVID pandemic has made touring conditions difficult and we want to make sure that we keep our fans and ourselves healthy and safe. That's smart. Uh, <laughs> what I find ironic is the fact that they've given us this heads up, which is sort of contrary <laughs> to the fact that Lauren Hill would have been late anyways. <laughs> <laughs> like for most of the shows. Right. My concern is that I feel this is, um, you know, it's possibly an excuse. Like, are they not getting along again? Like, that's my concern. Like, that is that be. really what it is? And they needed to use this as, and I mean, by all means of it's, you know, it's a much more, you know, palatable excuse to use. Um, but knowing of their roller coaster history, I'm wondering if there's actually some smoke or fire where the smoke is or where there's not smoke yet, but there could be <laughs> <laughs> all of that. Right now, they're just three sticks that are rubbing together and soon yeah. something's going to happen. <laughs> and that's going to have to be put out. Exactly. <laughs> with a global pandemic. Yeah. Cause what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Cher? Like, cause I don't, I don't know that I, I don't know that this is all the truth. You know what I mean? Well, I think you're right. I think it does. Uh, it's good timing to come up with something that makes them uh, seem noble and, and not that they're not noble, but it's yep. a nice clean. We want to make sure that everybody's safe and healthy and all that. And that's true. I think that maybe they also know themselves and even with the question marks of, of what this pandemic provides on the daily, <laughs> that, uh, that their own question marks that they bring to the table would have created a real situation. I am sad though, because to see those three together again, like I know they did that one-off uh, performance in New York or whatever, but I would have paid serious money to see these three together. Cause they're did just, you, they're magic. You know, did you ever, either of you ever see Dave Chappelle's block party? You keep telling me to watch it. I have. I think. I think. It. Honestly, it's less than two hours and completely, completely worth your time. Okay. Because you're fans of music that is good. Yeah. And it's a neat. It's totally worth it. I promise you. I just need to get to it on the list. I'll put just it on the put list. Put it on top of the list. How about <laughs> you do a, a, a highlight, a control C? Yeah. Then bring it to the top. Control V. There it is. Perfect on the list <laughs> that's my plan now <laughs> thanks for those shortcuts yeah i'm so here to help <laughs> uh escape um you guys ready to do a 90s rewind we are all right get into it does it involve jen in any way no but it okay. involves Je it involves jeopardy okay and i'll tell you why uh our travel will take us back to around this time in 1995 um uh, and you know what? 
I'm going to give you this, that uh, earlier, about last week, watching Jeopardy, uh, 90s R&B category. And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, and I did pretty well. But I was sort of uh, shocked by the fact that nobody got the answer to uh, a question well, that included exciting. lyrics to a song that said, I'm kind of buzzed and it's all because. So that was one set of lyrics. Then they also included another set of lyrics, which just on that line alone, in my opinion, I'm kind of buzzed and it's all because. This is how we do it. Thank you. Yep. Nobody got it. What? Nobody got it. What? nobody got it <laughs> that's an embarrassment i know and amy schneider uh did not get it she's so far doing incredibly well on jeopardy i mean at the time of the recording of this show um but no they didn't get it so i thought montel jordan deserves some due aside from the fact that uh he's also in a commercial with shaquille o'neal for i don't even remember what the product is but <laughs> I think it's a banking or insurance or something like that. And the whole bit of the commercial is, this is how we do it. Like in different scenarios. And finally she kills uh -huh. like, yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. <laughs> Anyways. So we're going back to 1995 around this time. We were, um, well, about a week away from Montel Jordan being on the charts, being introduced with that song. So he was well at the bottom of the charts because it was an intro, but it would take just a few weeks for him to top those charts and hit number one with This Is How We Do It. Also on the charts around this time in 1995, Desiree, you gotta be. Kelly's got the shimmy shoulders happening. I'm She's totally dreaming in the music video right now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be. Na, na, na. I don't remember the words. I always <laughs> mix up that song with uh, 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 Gabriel and Dreams. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, yes. Yep. Even though I think that was 93. So bad um, <laughs> that we can't remember things. How about Hootie and the Blowfish? They were in the top 20 with Hold My Hand. Was that a correct rear view, Sharon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I should be able to say the word or the name, Eni Kamozi, and you should be able to come up with his signature too. Hot step up. Murder up. <laughs> Here come the hot step up. <laughs> we're very talented um how about the confidence that melissa etheridge was oozing around this time in 1995 on a song called i'm the only one that was in the top 10 and speaking of oozing <laughs> which i as soon as i hear myself say it um there's really only a few occasions where that uh, can be a good word um <laughs> tlc topped the charts this week in uh, 1995 with creep hello sexy in fact crazy sexy cool kelly's shimmery shimmy I'm shouldering shimmy. i love it i love it <laughs> actually uh i think i told you this story before but just as a quick ode to janet um this this album i believe from them came out in the fall or whatever of 94 for tlc and so i was listening to it throughout the christmas wrapping season and then i went shopping to get more gifts and then promptly bought myself a janet like uh 50 like double cd collection item that i didn't even know was out there and so i was like that's ah, for me <laughs> so, <laughs> here's so another one got, for me got a little less that christmas <laughs> and it, it wasn't, wasn't you <laughs> Uh, that's your 90s rewind, folks. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. No, Sharon. no. Adam, Thank I still you. want to cuddle you and then walk on you like a turf grass at the <laughs> like a what? A walk on like the turf grass at the oh, turf. at the gardening expose. <laughs> expo I'll just go lay down on the ground at the farm. You can be yeah. with the grass. We have real stuff here. Sounds dangerous. Yeah. Sounds run like you have real good tractor. grass there. <laughs> <laughs> actual yeah. plants not stuff you stick up your nose or whatever you do with that stuff i don't oh know. my god that's a clear indication she was legit being honest about yeah. smoking grass and putting i was 23 nose. years old before i knew what pot smelled like and it's because i was <laughs> that's at, not bad i was at an event and there was that smell and i was like i turned to my friend i'm like what is that <laughs> And 10 minutes later, she was laughing. <laughs> she couldn't stop. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> and then I got really hungry for some Twinkies. <laughs> That's normal. Yeah. <laughs> and it passes. <laughs> uh, well, this is it, you guys. We are at the end of um, 
another episode in it's been so enjoyable i have to say (laughs) (laughs) do you have to say my shirt one more time everybody look at the shirt all the people listening look at that shirt such (laughs) fine quality cotton yeah (laughs) anyways that's enough i love you both have a great week I love you guys. Thanks for uh, listening, everybody. Finding us wherever it is that you do that. We appreciate it very much. Thank you for listening to 90s Now. Still happening. 